now that I have uh, my payment account set up and my attorney set up, I should be able now to go ahead and click on initiate a new case. So this is going to take us to our brand new case filing screen. This screen is designed to be single screen. Um, we're just going to have you fill it out step by step to collect the information we need from you in order to submit your new case to the court. So in step one, the first thing we need to indicate is what court are you going to file in? So this is a list of all the counties or the courts in the state of Illinois. You simply select the one that you want to file on. You can also start typing in this field if you want to start filtering the list down. So if I start typing Peoria, notice it immediately goes to Peoria County. So I'll go ahead and select Peoria for this example. And then case type. So this is a list of all the case types available in Peoria County for e-filing. Again, you could filter this down. If I start typing something like law, it's just going to show me all the law cases. Or maybe I start typing something like tort, it'll just show me the tort cases. So lots of options there. So let's see, I'll go ahead and select, let's see, let's do some sort of law case. So let's do a contract money due. So now we're going to move on to step two where we must identify and upload the documents we're going to submit to the court. So the first field here is a document type field. What is the document type we're going to file? So this is a list of all the document types the court has made available on a brand new case filing. Most likely with a new civil case, I'm going to be filing a complaint. So we'll go ahead and select that. That will then default into the document description field. However, this field is editable. So you could change this if you would like, or you could just leave it as complaint. The next step is going to be to browse out to your computer and select the document you would, up, would like to upload and submit to the court. So this is very much like attaching a document to an email. We're just going to click this click to upload link here. This will open up the file system on our computer. Now we're going to navigate our computer to select the document we want to submit to the court. One thing to point out here, that the court does require that we submit to them your documents in a PDF format. So if you convert documents to PDF and upload them as PDF, that's great. However, if you want to upload your Word or WordPerfect documents, we'll convert them to PDF for you. So for this example, I'm going to scroll down here. I have a complaint that's in a Word document. I'm going to select that one and upload it. So notice now we sort of create a line item here about the document you just uploaded. The file name is now a hyperlink, so you could actually view the document. And notice the file extension is now .pdf. I had uploaded a Word document, but our system went ahead and converted it to PDF for you. If I click this link, I can actually see that PDF, kind of look over it, make sure the formatting looks good, um, everything looks good. I'll go ahead and close that tab, and I'm right back to my filing. Now notice the fields here to upload documents are still available. That's because you can upload as many documents as you need to in order to submit your case to the court. So let's say I had something else I wanted to go along with this. Maybe it's some sort of notice. So I'll select document type of notice. Maybe I'll call it a notice of claim. We'll browse out and we'll find my notice and upload that. And again, our fields are available so we can upload as many documents as we need to. Keep this simple, I'll just stop with two. I'm going to click on Done Adding Documents and then move on to Section 3, Security and Optional Services. For every document we upload, we need to indicate a security level. So um, you're going to see things like confidential and non-confidential or confidential and public. Most often, they're just going to be non-confidential or public. So I'll use that in this example. Then you're also going to see here a field called Optional Services. I highly recommend no matter what you are filing, you review the items that are available here in the optional services. Sometimes, based on the way that the court has configured the system, there are actually things in here that you need to pay that aren't optional. So I'm not sure why they've placed them in the optional services field, um, but that's why I say, I say you should always review these things. You might find things like jury fees you know you need to pay or first appearance fees you need, you need to pay, things of that nature. For this example, I'm just going to leave it as none um, on both of our documents. I'm not going to select any optional services. In, a, in another example filing, we'll show you what those look like as we go through. So let's move on to section four, new case parties. So for my new contract money due case, um, this is going to require that we enter a plaintiff and a defendant. So we've given you a box here to enter the plaintiff information and a box to enter the defendant information. So you'll want to go ahead and fill this out. They can either be an individual or a business. So let's say this time it's a business. So I'm going to just go ahead and make up a company name here. And then we'll put in an address. I'm just kind of making stuff up here. 
And then we'll go on to, uh, there's a field here where you can also choose the attorney who's representing this party. So this is a list of all the attorneys in your firm. You can simply select the one that's representing that party. Then we can move on to the defendant. Maybe we'll make up a name here as well. This will be an individual, city, state, and zip. And again, you do have that representing attorney party, uh, representing attorney field, um, but these are the attorneys in your firm. So not likely somebody in your firm is also going to represent the defendant. So we can just leave this blank for now. You don't know who they're going to be represented by. So we have our plaintiff and the defendant. Now, if you have multiple plaintiffs or multiple defendants, you can add them at this time. So that's what this add party or copy last party link is for. If I click add party, this is just going to generate a new box for us to enter another party's information. So I can select their role and go through and enter their information. If I click remove party, that'll get rid of it. The other option here is copy last party. So let's say James Harris is, I'm going to name his wife as a defendant too, who's got the same address. So a quick and fast, easy way to enter that is say copy last party. That just copies the James Harris party. Now I can say this is Jane Harris. So a very easy way to copy uh, party information so that you can add additional. So you can add as many parties as you need to to make up this case. I'll stop there with the one plaintiff and two defendants and move on to Section 5. In Section 5, I just need to indicate the party I'm filing on behalf of. Most likely with the new case, I'm filing on behalf of the plaintiff, so I'll go ahead and select the plaintiff. Section 6, Service Contacts. In the state of Illinois, electronic service is not supported, or at least they've chosen not to support it within the e-filing system. Um, so we can skip over this. We'll do a new demonstration. Uh, we'll do a demonstration on an existing case filing to show you how electronic service works. Um, you're going to continue to do service um, by traditional means on brand new cases for now. Section 7, we're outlining the filing fees due. So we know for the case there's a $276 uh, fee due. Uh, we're not sure on the uh, complaint or the notice of claim. So all you can do is click any of these click to confirm links, and that will have us reach out to the court to confirm the filing fees, and then we display a new column out here to confirm those fees. So we have uh, $276 on the new case, nothing for the complaint or the notice. We have green filings provider service fee of just $1. And then here's where we see that court convenience fee. So this is going to be $8 in this instance. That's roughly 3% of the total filing fee because the payment account I have selected is my credit card. Now, if I choose this over to eCheck and I click Confirm Fee Calculation again, notice this convenience fee changes to just $0.25. Cents. So it can be very much uh, cheaper or a lot cheaper to use an eCheck versus a credit card when you're e-filing. But that's up to you as the filer. Now, if this was a filing where you believed you don't owe these filing fees, maybe you're a government entity, this is where you would choose that waiver option. So you go ahead and choose waiver. Again, you can click confirm fee calc, and this should come back now as zero. Um, so if you're submitting with a waiver payment account, it's going to zero it out. In this instance, I'll go ahead and use my credit card, and then we'll move on to section five, or section eight. Section eight, we're just going to complete the information. First, I'm going to select the attorney I'm filing on behalf of. Remember, I'm logged in as a legal support staff user. So in order for me to file, I have to select the attorney I'm filing on behalf of. So I'll go ahead and select my attorney. Client matter number. This is where you can input your own internal client or file numbers. This is an optional field that will accept any value you want to put on in there. Um, but its intention is so that you can track filings against your own internal uh, tracking numbers. This will display on any receipts generated out of the system, any reports generated out of the system, so that you can track against clients. Courtesy copy, this is um, where you can enter any list of email addresses separated by a comma. Um, and what will happen then is when you submit your filing, green filing is going to generate a courtesy copy email to that person, to whatever email addresses you put in here, just letting them know this document has just been submitted to the court. This is not intended to be electronic service. This is simply a courtesy notice to somebody letting them know it's been filed. Maybe it's uh, your client. Maybe it's somebody else in your firm. You're just letting them know this is done. Note to clerk. This is where you can type any note to the court clerk that you need to. Uh, maybe you have to tell them something about why you've done what you've done with your documents or with the options you've selected in the e-filing system. 
Um, only the court clerk will see this note and they can take it into account as they review your filing. Finally, we're going to check this box to verify all the information we've submitted uh, above is correct and then we'll click submit filing. So at this point, we're packaging up all this data and documents. We're redirecting you or we're submitting that to the court. Court is going to acknowledge receipt and will be redirected to our filing status screen where you'll see your filing highlighted in this green color here. It'll have a status of pending, meaning it's pending the clerk's review, and an envelope number will be assigned. This envelope number is important because it is assigned by the court's system. You know if you have an envelope number that the court has your filing. It's also the best number to use if you ever need to contact the court regarding the status of a filing. Um, you can give them this number and they can easily look up your filing to look at status. Now, as a result of this filing, there are several email notifications that are generated. So I want to pop over here into my email and show you what those look like. The first email that gets generated is going to look like this one here. It'll say su filing submitted for, and in this case, since it's a brand new case filing, it just has the envelope number in the subject line. If we click that uh, email to open it up, you'll see it's just going to give you a summary of what was filed, who filed it, summary of the estimated charges, and actually shows you a link to the document you submitted as well. This is just a confirmation email from the court letting you know that they've received your filing. The next email that's going to go out is actually generated by Green Filing. It's going to look like this one here, and it's the courtesy copy email we generate to all the email recipients you put in that field. So it's just going to say courtesy copy and have the filing ID in the subject. If you open it up, um, the email recipient is going to say, oh, okay, I see that this attorney here has just filed these documents in this particular court. Um, here's a little bit more detail about the filing and attached to the email they're going to find a copy of the document you submitted. So again this is just a courtesy notice to whomever you'd like to send it to letting them know you just submitted these documents to the court. And finally the next email that's going to be generated is one letting you know whether or not the court has accepted or rejected your filing. So it's going to look like this one here. It'll indicate the filing ID. It'll indicate whether it's been accepted or rejected in the subject. And it'll have the case number and the case name in the subject as well. If we open this up upon the clerk having accepted your filing, you're going to receive this email where first and foremost, you're going to see this accepted status at the top. And directly attached to that email, you're going to get a file stamped copy of your document.